people on scene, it's usually an engine, they are trained to uh, identify a light, the likely general area where the fire started and uh, they don't have time to look at it really closely but they can at least you know rope off where they think it started so it doesn't accidentally get any evidence doesn't get crushed in the uh, in the response when a uh, fire starts our first responders go out uh, they will request a fire investigator to come on scene and we'll go out and see what they have so here we are in no it's November and it's drizzling and there's clearly not a fire now but there was a fire here in 2017 behind me there's multiple parts to a fire investigation. There are, the, there's the field component during the height of the season when it's hot and there are lots of fires. We're running around um, investigating, you know, doing the field portion of our investigations. This time of year, we're finishing up our reports. So DNR intends to investigate every wildland fire that starts on or near our lands, um, even ones that are set unintentionally with no malice involved. If we discover that the fire was intentionally set you know, ne through negli negligence or, or criminal intent, uh, will pursue cost recovery. So even though 85% uh, or more of uh, wildland fires that are set in Washington um, are set by humans, the majority of them aren't intentionally set. Uh, fires start on accident while people are recreating or working on their equipment. Right here by my feet, uh, here's, a, here's a bonfire spot. And it's actually pretty good because it's you can drive all around this. It's completely surrounded by dirt, um, but it is a pretty big bonfire. And if you had large chunks of wood here, um, you could have a pretty good blaze going that might set some embers off. So the main thing to remember is just to be mindful with what you're doing. What toys, tools, campfires do you have that you're responsible for that could accidentally start a fire?